The fugitive prophet has crossed out of the Empire and now turns north. I'm now in unfamiliar territory. The Order of Trinity was clear. I am to pursue the false prophet and his adherents to the ends of the earth and wash away his heresy. But I believed I could overtake him months ago. Still, he eludes me. He crosses Khazar land and across the Caucasus mountains. Here, I'm at a disadvantage. I speak a dozen tongues of the Empire, but in the hinterlands, I'm often left to communicate with little more than a sword. The Prophet, it seems, speaks every language, as if he were born to them. He's passed through the lands of the Rus. I cannot shake the feeling that he's taunting me, waiting until I'm a day's ride away before moving on. I will not be home before the winter as I hoped. I've stopped at a small village by a glassy lake they called Svetloyar. The prophet spoke here, and now the villagers refuse me lodging. I slept on the banks of the lake, where a young man bearing a crude version prophet's icon tried to kill me as I dozed. I made an example of him, and now the people fix me with the evil eye, spit at me as I pass. I must move on soon. His sickness spreads. An arrowhead carved from bone. This looks like Mongol craftsmanship. This was a whistling arrow. Mongol archers would fire these over their enemies to frighten and confuse them. A sort of passport. Whoever held this spoke with the authority of the Mongol Empire. It reads, 
By the power of eternal heaven and order of the Empire, whoever does not show respect will be guilty of an offense. Byzantine war galley. How the hell did it get down here? Mongolian. They passed through here. I must be close to the lost city. Must be 
something up there. <sighs> I think I can make that. Probably. Maria Adula is trapped. The ice gave way. Her spine snapped in two. No matter. While I hope to wield her cannons against the false prophet, we will continue on foot. I have six of the Order of Trinity's best, and we have been stockpiling food and supplies while the sailors starved. They do not know it yet, but they will give their life for the cause. My men and I will find our way out of these icy caves and continue on foot. Before the ship was swallowed by the ice to the south, we heard music. That will be our first stop. But first I must rest. The cold has sunk into my bones. And I am drowsy. Just a little sleep. somehow. Now to find out what's up there.
Look at all this. Why were they carrying so much wealth with them? It's done. We'll die here, thanks to Coraldus and the madness of the Order of Trinity. My ship will never see water again. We entered the glacial sea too far into the winter. Would have been turned back, but Coraldus would not abandon this lost prophet. He and his dead-eyed warriors seized control. He forced the ship through shallow tributaries until we could go no further. Then he made my crew construct sled runners, and the bastard forced us to tow the ship over land. It was death and excommunication to deny him. But it was death either way. I will make sure he dies here, with us. I have always kept a little poison at the ready in case the ship was taken. Now it has another use. the archery techniques of the foes of the Byzantine Empire. Byzantine brooch. The enamel work is beautiful. This portrait has been defaced. It looks like it was depicting the prophet. They must have had to hide their faith. continues on. I, I do not know what drives him. We pass through frozen mountains at the edge of the world. His people are dying. 
Every day, I pass graves or bodies left along the faint trail. I have grown thin and hard, but I am close now. My, my horse is dead. The mare that had been with me since the campaigns against the Bulgars. I butchered her and carried the meat on my back. But I am so close. I can hear them singing just over the ridge. A joyous sound on the wind. Our prophet will be dead within the week. And I will return to the Order of Trinity, triumphant. Just one more day, oh, and I will be upon him.